Aloha everyone. Welcome to my kitchen. And today is going to be our first wet lab, as it's called, where we get to get out our microscopes and learn how to use a microscope. So this tutorial is about how to do your use of a microscope in cell structure and function lab. So you're going to learn how to use this baby. It's going to be so much fun. This is a real microscope. Even though it says toy on the box, it's a real microscope with excellent images. So you're not only going to learn about the principles of microscopy, you're going to learn how to make a wet mount, including uh, taking a wet mount of your cheek cell and even being able to see the nucleus of the cell under the microscope. How cool is that? You're going to look at all sorts of cool stuff like colon epithelium. How cool is that? So I'm going to teach you how to use this little baby today, and uh, you're going to become an expert microscoper. So um, really important that you pay attention to all the steps of the lab that are shown in the tutorial, as well as making sure you're going along and reading all the parts of your lab handout. Um, this lab also requires you to take pictures of your specimens under the microscope, as well as yourself performing some of the, the procedures. So you'll want to have your cell phone handy or some other form of a digital camera. And I'll show you how you can actually take pictures, pretty good ones, of your specimens through the ocular of your microscope. Okay, uh, first things first, safety first. We gotta get in gear. So I'm making this online lab very similar to how we would do a face-to-face -face lab on campus. And that means understanding the rules of lab safety. So, you know, none of the labs we're doing in this online course involve very, very dangerous things, but there's always chances that something could happen. And we are using some chemicals like today, like uh, methylene blue, which is a, a microscopic stain um, or a stain for microscopic things that you're looking at. So um, we want to get into here. First of all, if you have hair like this or anything longer than this, you want to put it up. So um, make sure you put your hair up in a braid or a ponytail or something like that because you want it out of your way and you don't want chemicals getting on it and you don't want it getting tangled up in something so I'm just gonna braid it stick it in uh, second of all you're gonna want to wear your lab gloves which should have come with your PPE set with your um, lab in a box kit so let's get in gear put on our gloves and of course don't put them on backwards like I just did. Um, you're going to want to have your lab goggles handy. Now, when you're actually looking through the microscope, um, you don't want to wear the goggles because it'll be really hard to see the image well. But when we're doing things like staining the slide, you're going to want to wear your goggles. So have them handy. Um, you should also wear your lab apron, your lab coat. Um, I dumbly forgot my lab coat and my office when I was going to um, prepare this. So I don't have mine, but you should wear your lab coat that came with your PPE set and I'll even be having you take a picture of yourself doing this procedure showing that you're also following lab safety procedures including wearing all your PPE. Okay now let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is go over the parts of your microscope. Now you should understand the differences between this home microscope you're using and the ones that would be typically used in a um, laboratory in a face-to-face -face setting. Uh, typically, the ones that are used in the lab um, are binocular, meaning that they have two what are called oculars, pieces that you look through with your eye. You have a monocular microscope, so this means that it has one um, ocular tube and eyepiece. But that's okay, it just means you got to close one eye, oops, like that. So you got to close one eye as you're looking through the scope. Um, so let's go over the parts of this thing. So this is an ocular tube. This is the ocular piece or the eyepiece. It comes out, so be very careful because it, um, you know, it can drop and break. So be very careful. That fits right in there. This is the head of the microscope, um, and it holds kind of. It's kind of the seam between the ocular and the nose piece, which is this part. So this is the nose piece, and it holds the objective lenses. That's what these things are. These are called objective lenses. These are the actual lenses that will focus on your specimen, and they come at different magnifications. Now, this is very important. Your eyepiece, this thing right here, and the lens that's your ocular lens that's in this eyepiece, has a magnification by itself of 10. So 10x. And what that means is that just by itself, your specimen that you put here on the stage will look 10 times bigger than it really is, just from this. 
Now each of the uh, objective lenses has their own magnification. So these are called objectives and they contain a lens called an objective lens. And notice that they come in different colors. So the lowest magnification one says 4x, and it has a red ring on the scope. And it's attached to the nose piece. And if you turn this nose piece clockwise, you'll hear a little click when it's in place. And you that's uh, turned you to the next higher magnification which is, in this case, the 10x objective, and it has a yellow ring on it. Okay, so we've gone <coughs> from 4x to 10x. If you turn it clockwise again, click, you get the largest magnification for the scope, and that is 40x, so it has a blue ring around it. So we have 4x in red, 10x in yellow, and 40x in blue. Now, those are just the... Um, the magnifications of these objective lenses by themselves. However, when you place your specimen, your slide, on the table, you'll get a total magnification when you look through the ocular lens. And that total magnification is going to be 10 times whatever the objective is. So we're always going to start on the lowest magnification, so that'll be 4x. This is 10x, so what's the total magnification of your specimen? That's right. 40x total magnification, 10 times 4. And you always want to uh, be specific. Are you talking about just the objective lens magnification or the total magnification? All right. So, again, just pieces here, ocular tube, ocular lens, head, nose piece. Always turn it clockwise for these scopes. And objectives with objective lenses that we have 4x, uh, 10x, and 40x objectives. Okay. Now, I get mentioned this is called the stage. In the microscopes that are in a face-to-face -face lab, they're usually mechanical stages, meaning they'll have a whole set of levers down here called the mechanical stage assembly. And that lets you mechanically turn the move the specimen, the slide, from left to right and up and down. Well, these are pretty simple. They don't have a mechanical stage assembly, so it's not a mechanical stage. It's a hand stage. So when you put your specimen on, you have to use your fingers to slide it around under these clips right here. So a face-to-face -face, um, lab would not have um, the clips. It would have little mechanical parts that you put the slide in. So let me demonstrate how to put a slide on a stage. Let's see. So you have uh, your little cases of slides here. One came with your, actually two came with your microscope, and those are glass. Um, some are prepared and some are blank. And then uh, your lab in a box kit came with this one. It says Carolina DL Basic Slide Set 1. So this is a custom slide set that I told them to put together. And I'll just go ahead and take them all out so you can see them. Uh, most of these are glass, so be careful. And some are not glass. But, um, the first slide that you're going to be using for this lab is the one called the letter E. Let's see if you can focus on that. So again, like Sesame Street says, today's lesson was brought to you by the letter E. Okay, um, so that's the letter E, and literally it's a letter E. So you can actually make your own letter E slides by just clipping a little E from like a newspaper and uh, putting a cover slip on it. But um, this is a letter E. It's already prepared for you. Um, you want to make sure that you're looking at the label right side up. And um, you'll notice that the E, when you look at it before you put it on the scope, see if you can see what orientation that E's in. Let's see if I put O. Oh. Can you guys see that that's upside down? Okay, at least on my slide. Your slide might be different, but mine is upside down. So note, you'll be recording what your initial orientation of that E is. Okay, and then um, you're going to very carefully, and you don't want to let these clips slam down on the glass because it'll break them, but very carefully slide the, let me see if I can bring this down a little bit. Um, you want to slide this letter E slide onto the stage. And just very carefully, you want to get it centered right in the middle. So first and foremost, make sure you have batteries in your microscopes. You're going to need three AA batteries. Make sure they're nice and fresh. And, and the on switch for this guy is in the back, on the base. So 
Notice that there are two lines and one line. You want to switch towards the one line, which if you're looking from the back of the scope would be to the left. Because um, this scope, okay, so that should turn on the light. So check to make sure the light is on. See, it's on. Um, this is actually a, um, a dissecting and a compound scope. We're using, um, for this lab, we're using it as a compound scope, meaning that you get the magnification from the ocular and the objectives compounding on each other. Um, towards the end of the semester, we're going to use it as a dissecting scope. So for a dissecting scope, you turn it towards the two lines to the right, and that brings the light up from, um, from the top here. So that's for looking at big objects like whole insects. We're not doing that for this lab. We're using it as a compound scope. We want the light to come from the bottom, and so we're going to turn it to the left to turn on the light from the bottom. Okay, um, so that's the stage. Another um, thing that's on your scopes is, and I'm going to turn the light off just a sec to um, not waste the batteries. Um, this little thing, if you're looking from the back um, through the ocular, on your left is this sliding little disc here. Let's see if I can get that good in the camera. That's called the iris diaphragm. And it has a lot of little holes. And notice it'll have numbers towards settings. And as you turn that, you get different size holes. The smaller the hole, the less of the light from the bottom shines up uh, into the specimen. So by using this, you can kind of get rid of some of that ambient light that's coming through and focus that beam of light straight through your specimen. So, you know, you probably want it uh, fairly larger holes when you're under low magnification, but as you go up to the highest magnification, you're going to want that hole nice and small so you don't have a lot of ambient light getting through and that light's just focused through the specimen. So that's the iris diaphragm. Now on a um, face to face laboratory compound scope, usually the iris diaphragm is under here and it'll have a little lever that you turn back and forth to limit the amount of light going through. Ours has it as a little disc. Does the same purpose. Uh, the other thing our scope doesn't have, which most face-to-face um, -face labs have, is what's called a condenser. And a little knob, it could be on this side or on that side, coming out called a condenser knob. And it's just kind of an apparatus that's over the light that will help, um, it'll help with depth perception. So it kind of helps with the contrast of the specimen against the background. We don't have that, but we really don't need it to get excellent images on this little baby here. So... We've got our slide on here. The label should be to the left. And now notice that we have this big distance between the specimen and the bottom of the objective lens. That's a big distance. And it's going to, if you just look through here and try to focus it, you're going to be like, I can't see anything. I'm adjusting the knob. What's going on? So you're going to want to bring that stage close to this lowest magnification. And guys, here's the important thing. If you want to make your life wonderful and not awful, listen to me on this. No matter what specimen you're focusing, always, 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 we're going to start off with the very lowest magnification, the 4X, the red one. Focus it when it's as perfect as we can get it. Then you switch it clockwise to the 10X. Focus it as wonderful as we can get it. And then finally focus it to the largest specimen, the 400 magnification and focus it there. If you skip a step, say, ah, I'm going to be lazy and not do the 4X one first, you are going to hate your life because when you get up to the highest one, you're not going to be able to see much of anything. It's going to look very fuzzy and you won't be able to get it any better. So listen to me on this. Always go from lowest to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. Okay, so never skip a step. Always 4X, 10X, 40X objectives. Okay, trust me, very, very important. And here's a quick quiz question. What is total magnification of the red 40X objective? So 4 times 10 is 40 total magnification. The yellow 10X objective, so 10 times 10 of the ocular, so 100 total magnification. And the blue one, the 40X one, that would be 40 times 10, so 400 total magnification. So that means your specimen looks 400 times bigger than it really is. Amazing, huh? That's a lot. Now, um, face-to-face labor um, -face laboratory microscopes, the fancy ones, usually also have a fourth objective 
called the oil immersion objective or um, it's a hundred X objective. So it gives a total of a thousand um, total magnification. That's for looking at things like bacteria, really, really tiny things. And it requires an oil called oil immersion or immersion oil, sorry, immersion oil. And you put a little drop of it on the slide and that cushions the distance between the objective lens and the specimen because the oil immersion lens is so, the, the objective is so big that it almost touches the specimen. And if you don't use that oil, it scratches the lens and, and the slide. And that can get quite expensive and not very nice. So fortunately, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have an oil immersion objective. We're going, highest we're going is the 40X objective. Okay, moving on. So this right here, this is called your focus control knob. And this is what you use to focus your specimen. When I turn it, notice that it brings that slide up and down. In fact, let me turn back to the 4X objective because you'll see it more dramatically here. So up, down, okay? You never want to overturn this. So once you feel that resistance, um, you know, getting strong, don't go any further because it'll break. Um, now on fancier scopes, you tend to have two sets of focus course, uh, control knobs right here. You'll have a big one about like this called a course adjust and you'll have a smaller one inside called the fine adjust. And with those under the 4X and the 10X objectives, you use the course adjust to kind of make big movements of the stage. And then once you have it almost in focus, that's called par focal, then you'll use the fine adjust to fine tune it. Um, once you're at the 40X objective with this guy, so once um, it's here, um, on those face-to-face -face scopes, you never want to use the course adjust at this level because it can scratch the objective lens, um, which would be very, again, expensive. So you don't want to do that. Once you're up here, it should only be fine adjust. But for us, we only have one knob. We don't have a fine adjust knob. So you're just going to use this to do the focusing. But if you follow the rule that you always focus at each objective as you go up, then you won't ever need to worry about fine-tuning anything. It'll be as good as it's going to get with just this one knob. And assuming that you're also playing with the iris diaphragm along the way, which you should do at every objective. You should play with the, fine, uh, with the um, iris diaphragm after you focused it, just to make sure you've gotten the best image that you possibly can. Um, okay, what else? So this is, of course, called the base. Uh, when we carry it, a microscope, you always have one hand on the arm, one hand on the base. Um, you know, this guy's really lightweight, but this is how you carry, normally carry a microscope. And uh, I think we're about ready to focus this baby. So um, what I'm going to do is, so I got my letter E on here. I'm going to bring, I notice that there's a large distance here, so I'm going to bring it up um, just, you know, before I start looking through it. I turn my light back on. Of course, you want to do this on a table, so I'm going to see if I can do this in the camera back a little bit there we go okay so I have it on a nice hard flat surface and now I'm going to look into the scope and I've noticed that my E is kind of off to the side here so I'm going to center it and again I have to use my fingers here um, and I notice my light is really bright so I'm gonna start playing with that iris diaphragm um, over here I'm gonna start playing with this until you know, the light's not so bright. You don't want your light too bright because what you'll end up doing is bleaching out your specimen. And you don't want to do that because when you get into some of the more tricky kinds of specimens like the colon, if you bleach it out, you're going to miss some of the structure. So you want the light as low as possible while still being able to see. Oh, the other thing you want to do, I have here our lens paper. So here's your um, optical lens paper. You just need a small piece. It's always a good idea when you get started and before you um, leave to wipe down your lenses. And you always want to clean your lenses with lens paper. Never use paper towels or toilet paper or anything like that because they're not soft enough and they'll scratch your lenses. These are specially designed for microscope lenses. So you want to clean your ocular lens, clean your objective lenses very gently. Okay. And you can turn it, clean it. Uh, you can clean the lens above the light. 
and um, so that's what I did there, and your slide. Okay, so now you got your letter E here. Notice the orientation of it. Is it upside down or right side up? And then use your focus knobs to get it in nice focus. Okay, and you want to make sure the specimen is right in the center of what's called the field of view. That's the little circle of area that you can see through the microscope. So make sure it's nice and centered because what's going to happen is as we go up in magnification, so once I turn this up and especially once I get to the 40x objective, you're basically taking it and you're zooming in on the specimen. So you're seeing less of the field of view and you're focusing further and in. So you're not going to see that much of the specimen when you're at high magnification. So for example, and this happens a lot, I see students do this a lot, where um, they um, are using the letter E and they can see the letter E, but right smack in the middle is the hole inside the letter E, you know, the little round space. And when they focus into the highest magnification, they've actually focused into the space and they think their specimens disappeared because they don't see the black part of it. So you're going to have to keep that in mind that when you're going up in magnification, you're zooming in. Okay, so I'm good. Once I have it in focus, I'm ready to turn the objective. So we're going to turn it clockwise, okay? You're going to turn it clockwise, so to the right, um, until you hear a click. So make sure it clicks. Click um, for the 10x objective, which is the one with the yellow ring on it, okay? At this point, my specimen should be in parfocal, means almost focused. I shouldn't have to make any more large adjustments with the course adjust. Just fine adjustments and maybe the light. So I'm going to look in there. I'm going to make a fine adjustment. It's good. Now notice it'll look a little fuzzier when you're going up in magnification. The e, e, edges of the E start getting fuzzy. Um, again, I might want to center it a little bit better because as you go up in objectives, it doesn't look quite as centered anymore. I'm going to adjust my iris diaphragm to I get the image I want. So, okay, so looks pretty good there. And um, at this stage, your handout is going to ask you to take a picture of your specimen. So if you have a cell phone, which I know 90% of you guys all do, um, you're going to want to just play with it. Try to get it in, get the camera so that it goes right over the ocular. And you're just going to have to play with this for a while until you get what you want. But I know it's possible because I've done it, and I'm going to do it right now. Sometimes, let's see. Um, so here's, I don't know if you, okay, so there's a little piece of my letter E right there. So then I would um, send this to my email or something, save it as a JPEG, and you're going to actually paste it into the picture box in the handout. And I'll make a little tutorial showing you how to do that, just in case you don't know how to do that. Um, all right, so now I'm going to go up again, clockwise, click into um, into space here. And again, here, notice how close this objective lens is to your specimen. It's almost touching. So you don't want to make big movements anymore with your adjustment knob. Just if needed, the finest little adjustment. But you'll notice it's gotten darker because I've zoomed in. I've gotten close to that specimen. So you want to use your iris diaphragm to let a little more light in. Okay, so play around with it. You're now going to want the ones that have the smaller um, holes in the diaphragm to let more light in, or let more light straight through the specimen. Okay, so I've got mine pretty good there. I've adjusted the focus, and I can move it around on the stage if I need to. All right, um, and then you're going to want to um, take another picture. So I'm going to take another picture here, and... So now I have my at four, uh, the 40x objective, so 400 total magnification. Okay, but there's something else you're going to need to do here. Grab your 6-inch plastic ruler. We're going to use the metric side, so this is a little millimeter side. Can you see those? Okay, and I'm going to now um, take off my slide because I've done everything I need to do with that. I'm actually going to switch back to the 4x. I'm going to remove my slide, and now I want to figure out what my working distance is between a specimen and the bottom of the objective lens. And the way I do that is I'm actually going to take this ruler, and I'm going to measure, so you're going to kind of bend your ruler. I'm just going to try to estimate the number of millimeters between the stage and the bottom of each objective. So like 
you know, I'm just going to count, you know, okay, that's 10, 11, etc. I'm going to let you do it. I won't tell you the answer. So you're going to record that into your handout, switch it to the next objective, measure that distance, okay, and the next one and measure that distance. There won't be much distance on that one. But let me just see if I can hold this up close so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. So notice that, oops, notice that I'm just kind of measuring the distance between the stage and the bottom of the objective. The other thing you're going to do is measure your field of view. And to do that, you'll use a ruler, and you're going to put the ruler itself on the stage, and it doesn't really matter where. And under 4x, look through the thing until you see your ruler underneath and focus it, and then count how many millimeters you have from one edge of the circle, the area where you see your specimen, to the other. So one, two, three and a half. But I'm going to take a picture and show you so you can see what I just did here. Let me take a picture do, 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 so you know what to look for. Okay, this one's probably as good as it gets. So you see those lines there? Those are the millimeter lines that you'll see on your ruler. Okay. So, oh, another thing that probably I should have mentioned before you get started is it'll, um, for practicing the iris diaphragm, just take a little piece of um, lens paper. So I ripped it off here. And you'll see a little circle of light here. I don't know if you can see this here. See that little circle of light? And if you change your iris diaphragm around, you'll just notice how that diameter of that circle of light changes. It gets bigger or smaller. So just play around with that. That gives you an idea of what your iris diaphragm does. So that's something else you'll be doing. All right, now we're ready to play with some more slides. Now you're going to want your colored thread slide, okay? Put your colored threads. And this is a common prepared slide that's used for tutorials um, on how to use the microscope because it allows you to learn about depth of view. So there's three colors here, yellow, red, and blue. And the question is, which one's on top? Well, it may look different depending at what magnification you're at. So you're going to, again, gently place it on your slide. Start with a 4X, and you're going to use your thing, and you're going to go, oh, okay, it looks like such and such color is on top. I'm not going to reveal it to you. Don't forget to change your iris diaphragm. So just play around with that. And you'll notice, actually, even when you change your iris diaphragm, that kind of changes the look of which one's on top. So play around with that, and then record what you think is on top. Then go ahead and switch to the next higher magnification. Get it nice and centered. You want it centered where all these threads are crossing. Okay, and you say, oh, it looks like a different one's on top. And again, play with your dias diaphragm, and you'll see, um, you'll see it seem to change. And finally, your highest magnification. Actually, don't even do it at the highest magnification because these guys are so thick that it, it makes the specimen too close to the 40x. So just do this for the 4x and the 10x and see, see what you think. Okay, what else are you doing? You are going to make a wet mount of your cheek cells. So for this, you're going to want some paper towels. I am out of paper towels, so I'm using baby wipes. Sorry, Evie, I'm going to be using your wipes today. I'll show you Evie here. Now, of course, if this were a face-to-face -face lab, you would not be having a baby in the lab, but can't make a video without otherwise. So Evie's going to go down here and watch what I'm doing. I'm going to use her wipes. I'm going to put some down on the table here. And what are we going to do in this kitchen lab? We are going to take a blank slide. Now, your scope came with some blank glass slides. Your other um, kit came with a plastic um, blank slide and that's what I'm going to use. We're also going to need a cover slip. Okay, so this is a blank slide. Uh, if you want you can use your uh, some of your lens wipes to clean it up. Um, okay, I'm okay, so um, this is a cover slip. Um, so your kit came with a, um, a couple of plastic cover slips. Your microscope came with a few glass ones. If you're using glass be very careful. They're very easy to break and cut yourself. So um, you're going to take your blank slide, and this is kind of the gross part. You're going to need a toothpick, and I recommend using flat toothpicks, but I don't have any flat toothpicks right now, so I'm going to use these big, this is all I have, these big round ones. You're going to want to take the side of the toothpick, and we're going to be scraping off our inner cheek cells 
um, and looking at them under a microscope after we stain them. So what you're going to want to do is do this kind of gently because you don't want to scratch yourself and certainly don't go this way and poke yourself. And here, here's what I'm, you want to have your slide ready around because you're going to have to put a drop of water onto this. Okay, get some nice saliva going here. And uh, only handle your own cheek cells. Don't let anybody else handle your saliva or your cheek cells. Great, uh, 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 your cheeks. And now, once you get it nice, you're going to want to paint that. And you want to work pretty quickly because you don't want this to dry. Paint it onto your slide. So see if you can see how I'm doing that, painting it onto the slide. And then take um, your disposable pipette, squeeze it, go into a glass of water, get one drop, just one drop, squeeze out one drop on your cheek cells. You see that? Okay, so that's one drop on my cheek cells. And now you're going to want to put the cover slip on, but and there's different ways to do this. You can actually put the stain directly on your slide, on your cells, or do it the way I'm about to do it, which is what we're going to do for now. When you put a cover slip, you don't want to just drop it. You want to put it at an angle so you eliminate the likelihood of air bubbles. So put it on and drop. Okay. Give it a little tap, and it should spread out that liquid. And now, um, if there's a lot of extra liquid, you can kind of take the edges and we'll kind of capillary action up that, that liquid. Now you're going to, going to want to find your methylene blue stain. Okay, so this is your methylene blue stain. This stuff stains, so you should be wearing your lab coat. For this part, you should wear your goggles and your gloves. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put on my goggles. You don't want this stuff getting in your eyes or on your clothes. And again, if I had a lab coat, I'd be wearing it. But you guys should definitely be wearing your lab coats. And I'm going to require a picture of you um, having prepared your cheek cell with all your PPE on there. Okay, so very carefully open it up, and what you're going to do is pour one drop over on the edge of the cover slip. Okay, right on the edge of the cover slip. And then you're just going to kind of hold it at a 45 degree angle. And you can see that that um, stain is being pulled under the cover slip. And what it does is this stain likes to stain um, the nucleus of the cell. Okay, so once you have that ready, and just make sure it stays on there. Now you're ready to go. So now you can take off your goggles, and we're going to go ahead and look at this baby. Um, again, focusing it under the lowest objective first. So go ahead and put it under there. And, and then under the 4x objective, it's going to look... You'll see your cheek cells. They're going to look like just little tiny blue dots. They're not going to look like much at this low magnification, but see if you can find some. Okay. And once you see some, go ahead and try to get them in the center of the field of view so that you'll be able to focus on them at higher magnification. Okay. And, you know, again, you probably want to play with the iris diaphragm. Okay. And once you have them right in the center, so I'll see if I can take a picture of what this looks like now so that you know that it's not... Um, you can see it doesn't look like much at this stage. In fact, it's not really showing up on the camera, but you'll just see some little tiny blue dots. But I'll take a picture when we get to higher magnification so you can see what to look for. Okay. Good. So I have it focused and I'm playing with the iris diaphragm. Focus good at 10x. So I'm going to... Okay, here they are at 10x. Just those little tiny blue dots right there. Those are your cheek cells at 10x, uh, so 100 total magnification, but that's not enough. So we're going to go all the way up to the 40x, and again, be very careful about focusing it here because you're right there at the thing. Okay, this one looks really nice. I got a nice cheek cell here. Yes, I. It's, let me see if I can get a picture of this. Okay, let's see if you can see that. Do you see that beautiful little blue cheek cell here? And I'll post some pictures of um, some online um, cheek cells so you can see kind of what a professional one would look like if I actually had a, a real microscope camera to put on this. But anyway, see if you can see the nucleus inside of it, that little dark dot inside there. Here's what's amazing. That little dark, dark, dark dot that contains 
all your DNA for making a complete clone of yourself just in that one little cheek cell. I mean, how cool is that? All the DNA with all the genes required to clone you are in that little dot inside that cheek cell. This is very deep, isn't it? It's pretty cool. All at your at-home kitchen microscope. How cool is that? All right. So once you are done with that, um, go ahead and you want to dispose of this um, for now onto a paper towel. Just leave it there. Eventually, you're going to want to clean this under the faucet with some mild uh, hand soap and uh, detergent or mild hand soap. Let it dry with some paper towels or air dry because um, you can reuse these slides and cover slips later. All right. Um, now, uh, at this point, you should be an expert microscoper. You know how to use a microscope. So now you're ready for the advanced course. Let's see if you can magnify your mammal colon. Mm, that's a large intestine of some mammal. Who knows what kind? Probably, I have no idea. I don't want to speculate what they used on this. But this is um, the epithelium. It's the cell lining of the large intestine of some mammal. Uh, very, very cool. Um, the, the epithelial layer consists of some outer cells. It'll have a bunch of bubbly looking things in there called goblet cells, which produce the mucus that, you know, kind of lubricates the inside of the large intestine. Smooth move. And underneath that, you'll see uh, layers of connective tissue that have blood vessels in them and all sorts of things. It's very cool. So if you are an expert microscoper, you'll prove it by magnifying your and focusing your mammal colon here because you're only going to really see the structures at the highest magnification. So um, go ahead and see. I mean, it looks cool at all magnifications, but um, see if you can find goblet cells. So you won't see these till you're at the highest magnification. So don't forget to play with your iris diaphragm. Keep magnifying it up. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is a 10x. Let me just show you how pretty this is. But I want you guys to, to do your... These pictures do not do justice to what I'm seeing under this microscope. But if you get me something that looks close as... Well, you can't even see it on this video. Anyway, take a cool picture the best you can. And, uh, and then when you get to that 40x objective, the 400, and I'm magnifying this baby 400 times, I can see goblet cells, I can see epithelial cells, I can see connective tissue. It's beautiful, and I can't believe that this is what makes up my large intestine. It's so absolutely cool. And then you can kind of take your fingers and slide the slide around a little bit and just look around that slide at that beautiful piece of tissue right there. Um, the very outer layer is called the, um, is a, what's called a simple columnar epithelium. That means the cells like look like little columns. You can see the nucleus in each side of one. They're beautiful. So do your best to take a picture at the highest magnification of your mammal colon and turn it into me because I can't wait to see what you guys found out. And if you did that, I know that you know how to do microscopy. You have met the outcomes of this lab. Um, after that, you know, have fun with this. You know, there are your microscope itself came out, came with some other different kinds of prepared slides. So you can look at some pollen. Um, this pollen is uh, in a different kind of slide called a depression slide. Um, we have um, paramecium, we have a cheek cell prepared slide, so you can compare what you did to what's on this. Of course, they used a different stain. It's stained red instead of blue, but same thing. Uh, oh, almost forgot. You need to make a slide of salt. So you should have some salt here. This is regular old salt from the kitchen. You just need a few, I know I put a half teaspoon on, under the materials, but you actually only need to do a little pinch of a few grains. And for this one, you do not want to put um, a cover slip because these are large. And, and uh, just see how cool salt looks under a microscope. Salt looks absolutely amazing under a microscope. It looks like little, like you're in some ice kingdom. Like, and you can see it's actual cubes of sodium chloride. And play with the iris diaphragm when you do this, and you'll see how it changes the contrast of these guys. They just, they look so cool. And then there's also a um, prepared... Um, slide of salt crystals so you can kind of compare what you make to what they make and if you actually change the iris diaphragm so that you're between two of the circles that let the light in so you get a black background it looks even cooler you'll see that just pops out as these kind of white crystals and then you can focus it and oh it's beautiful it's gorgeous you're gonna love it anyway I am very curious to hear how you do on this lab um, this is rough this is the first microscope lab with an actual microscope that has ever been done online in the state of Hawaii.
and who knows, maybe the whole country. So I am very curious to hear how it goes, what we can improve. I know this video obviously needs improving, but uh, it's my first go around with a baby right next to me. So anyway, let me know on the discussion board how you do. I can't wait to see your pictures. And um, don't forget to take a selfie of you doing this procedure, wearing your personal protective equipment that I'm not wearing. Shame on me. Minus 10 points for me. Anyway, hope all's well, and I hope you enjoy it. Have fun. Bye.